We've done several videos now on amines, which I forgot to mention. This is probably the most fun notion about amines, is that they tend to be smelly. Let me write this down. Amines, amines tend to be, tend to be smelly, and I can make it make the smelly smell a little bit. And in general, they either in their gaseous state, they'll often smell like ammonia, so it's a very strong smell. Or in their liquid state, they usually smell like fish or even dead fish. They smell like fish. And in particular, in particular, if you look at if you look at trimethylamine, so this is let me draw it like this, H three C, you have your nitrogen, you have C H three and then you have your CH3, and you could even draw the lone pair. This is trimethylamine. This is the fish smell. This right here is the fish, the fish smell. Now the whole reason why I brought this up is because we're going to, in this video we're going to introduce a new type of molecule, and that's an aldehyde. And I want to contrast, contrast their smells. Now some of the smaller aldehydes still have a pretty strong smell. In particular formaldehyde, and we'll talk a little bit more about why this is an aldehyde. So this right here is formaldehyde, and that's the common name. And you've probably seen it used as a kind of a preservative, maybe even in your biology class, if there's like a you know a dead frog in a solution, it's probably inside of formaldehyde. Let me write this down. For formaldehyde. Once again, this is the common name. I'm going to teach you in a second how to systematically name these things. But when you have larger when you have larger aldehydes, they actually can have a pretty sweet or even a rosy smell. So you have something like benzaldehyde, which you actually saw when we started the benzene derivatives. So this is benzaldehyde right over here. And then this molecule, I want let me write this down. This is benzaldehyde. Benzaldehyde. Aldehyde. And then this molecule here, just when I tell you what it's called, you'll probably guess what it smells like. So this you has a benzene ring. You have a benzene ring like this. And then you have one, two, three carbons. The last one's double bonded to an oxygen, and then a hydrogen like there, and they have a double bond right over here. And this is called cinnamaldehyde. Cinna cinnamaldehyde. Maldehyde. Maldehyde. And as you could guess, this smells like cinnamon. And in fact, this is the molecule in cinnamon that gives it its smell, although you don't want to have large quantities of it or it might be poisonous. But in cinnamon, it's a very pleasant thing. So larger aldehydes tend to have kind of a nice, rosy, sweet, flowery smell. Smaller ones tend to be kind of pungent. If you open up that jar in your biology class and smell that frog, it will not be a pleasant smell. So now that I've talked about smell enough, I think, let's talk about what makes an aldehyde an aldehyde. And you might even see a pattern here. In all of these aldehydes that I've drawn, we have a carbon, we have a carbon double bonded to an oxygen, carbon double bonded to an oxygen, carbon double bonded to an oxygen. And actually this part of it right here, and we'll see this over and over again, this is called a carbonyl group. So that is a carbonyl group. That is a carbonyl group. This right here is a carbonyl group. Carbonyl group. And you even see it over here. But that by itself is not the distinctive feature of an aldehyde. You'll see that in other types of molecules. Let me write it here. Carbonyl. Carbonyl. What's distinctive about an aldehyde is attached to the carbon in the carbonyl, you have a hydrogen. You have a hydrogen here. You have a, and I sorry, I forgot to draw this hydrogen here on benzaldehyde. You have a hydrogen here. You have a hydrogen here. You have a hydrogen here. So in general, an aldehyde is something that looks like this. You have a carbonyl group. You have a carbonyl group. You have a hydrogen. And then you just have some other type of carbon chain. This right here is the simplest possible aldehyde. And actually, this chain ends up being just another hydrogen. Now, these three that I've shown you right here, these are their common names. And these are, these are the way that most people will talk about formaldehyde, benzaldehyde, or cinnamaldehyde. So they're just kind of good to know. And I'll show you one more. I'll show you one more. And this is a pretty important one. Let me do it down here so we have some space. So another one looks like this. So bonded to 
a CH3 over here, and then a hydrogen. This right here is called acetylaldehyde. Acetyl, acetylaldehyde. And I just wanted to expose you to these common names, because this is what people normally use for these molecules. Now, there is an IAPUC, I always forget the acronym. There is a systematic way to name them. It's actually pretty, pretty straightforward. You just look at the longest carbon chain, and you always start numbering at the carbon that's in the carbonyl group. And it's always going to be at the end of the chain, because that's always going to be bonded to a hydrogen. And actually, let me just make clear that this is also an aldehyde. You have your carbonyl group, and on one end, you have a hydrogen just like that. Now, the systematic way of it, you just look at the longest carbon chain. Over here, there's just one carbon. So here, you would call this the systematic name. You would call this meth, methanal, not methanol. Methanol would you means you would have a OH group. But since the, the, you have this double bond and you have a hydrogen, or you could say this double bond is at the end of the carbon chain, this is an aldehyde. So the systematic name is methanol not methanol. Let me make that clear. This is methanol right there. This one, I won't do cinnamaldehyde or benzaldehyde, because this is really the only way that people name it. Actually, frankly, formaldehyde, people never call it methanol. And acetylaldehyde, they'll never call it what I'm about to name it. But the systematic name is the longest carbon chain. You have one, two carbons. So it is eth Nal, ethanol. I don't want to pronounce it incorrectly. So let's do a couple more of these just to make sure we have a decent understanding of the systematic names here. So if we were to name, and in general, if you have a really long chain, the systematic chain, the systematic names are what is used. So this thing right here, this thing right here, what would you call it? It's clearly, it's clearly an aldehyde. You have a carbonyl group, a hydrogen, and you have one, two, three carbons. So three carbons, the prefix is prop. So it's propanal, propanal. It's an aldehyde. If we want to do something slightly more complicated, if we want to do something slightly more complicated, let's do something like this. What would this be called? Let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five. We have five carbons, so it'll be a pent. Penta, and then it's obviously an aldehyde, so it's pentanol. Pentanol, and you always assume that you start numbering at the carbon in the carbonyl group. So one, two, three, four, five. And on the two carbon, you have a methyl group. So this is two methyl. Let me do it. So you have a methyl group right here. So this is going to be two methyl, two, two methyl pentanol.